Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. We will now review using the Law Firm Project Tracker Workbook. This workbook is very similar in nature to the Law Firm Financial Analysis Worksheet. The layout of information is almost identical, however the analysis generated from the data tends to emphasize the tracking of the project billing versus the financial aspect. Just as when entering data into the Law Firm Financial Analysis Worksheet, you begin entering data into the Project Parameters Worksheet. Within this worksheet, you will list each project by general project type, and then input what percentage of the total hours of the project is performed by each general type of skilled worker. For each skilled worker listed, you can then enter the billing rate into the blended rate cells in the cell range of B13 through G13. This rate is the average billing rate for someone with the selected skill set. Note that you can also add columns and rows as needed in order to accommodate your law firm's business needs. The next sheet we will examine is the planning worksheet. Within this worksheet, you enter the names of the individual projects that your firm handles into the cells shown in column A within the table. Note that you should also enter the name of each project into the corresponding cells within column A on the planned totals and the actual totals worksheets as well. The names of the projects entered in the planning worksheet should automatically populate within column A of the tracking worksheet due to the linking of the cells with the formula reference, so you should not need to enter that data into the tracking worksheet. On the planning worksheet, you enter the project type for the project into the adjacent cell in column B. Note that each project type must correspond to one of the project types that you created within column A of the project parameters worksheet. You can then input the estimated start and estimated finish dates for the project. When you input the values into these columns, Excel will then calculate the duration shown in column F. After that, enter the estimated total number of work hours on the project into the estimated work column. As you enter the total work for each project, you will see the grand total of estimated work hours displayed at the bottom of column E. As you complete the estimated work for your clients, you will need to enter the actual project values into the tracking worksheet. Doing this allows you to compare your estimated values to your actual values. You do this by filling in the actual start, actual finish, and actual work values for each project listed. As you complete the data entry, the values shown within all of the other spreadsheets will automatically calculate themselves. This is the data that is then used for project tracking. If you view the planned totals worksheet, you will see the total amounts planned for billing for each general type of skilled worker on each project. If you view the actual totals worksheet, you will see the total amounts actually billed for each general type of skilled worker on each project. You can then click to the hours chart worksheet to view the comparison between the estimated hours and actual project work hours for each skilled worker type. You can click the billing chart worksheet to view a chart that shows the difference between estimated and actual project billing amounts for each skilled worker type. Note that you can also enter your company's name in cell A1 within the planning through actual totals worksheets. You can also right click the Your Logo Here picture box at the top of those worksheets and then select the Change Picture command from the pop-up menu that appears in order to open a dialog box that allows you to select a picture of your company's logo to add to these sheets if desired. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.